As a standoff over the federal debt limit continues, President Biden says he's considered invoking the 14th Amendment to avoid default. And pandemic-era border restrictions expire tomorrow night. Good morning. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. President Biden says he's considered invoking the 14th Amendment to avoid a catastrophic default on the federal government's debt. But NPR's Franco Ordonez reports Biden doesn't think there's enough time to litigate the matter. Biden says the 14th Amendment could allow the U.S. government to keep making payments on the nation's debt, but he expects the move would be challenged in the courts. The problem is it would have to be litigated. And in the meantime, without an extension, it would still end up in the same place. Biden was speaking at the White House after meeting with House Speaker Kevin McCarthy and other congressional leaders about the debt limit. He said he's willing to have a separate discussion with leaders about the budget and spending priorities, but he said the threat of default must be removed from the table. He also said he would not rule out a short-term extension of the debt limit. Franco Ordonez, NPR News. The White House. U.S. pandemic health rules expire tomorrow that allow border authorities to force out migrants coming into the country. The rules are generally known as Title 42. For months, governors in southern states have been sending migrants on buses to other northern cities, including to New York. Now, New York City Mayor Eric Adams says he will send migrants to other counties after they reach the city. New York Governor Kathy Hochul says she is calling up the National Guard. Well, we are in communication with the mayor's team and also helping him find locations within the city limits. Again, opening up state property and talking to other counties that are, that are interested in having people come. The governor says she is using over $1 billion of New York's budget to help the state address the migrants' needs. The Texas House of Representatives has voted to expel Republican lawmaker Brian Slayton. He is accused of having sex with a young legislative aide. The Texas newsroom Sergio Martinez Beltran has more. The full Texas House chamber sat in silence as members read the report that found Brian Slayton in violation of the House rules. State Representative Ann Johnson, a Democrat from Houston, said Slayton's actions left members with no other choice than to vote for expulsion. We are here because a 45-year-old member took advantage of and abused his power over his subordinate teenage staffer. A Texas House panel found that Slayton gave alcohol to his 19-year-old aide at his apartment. Afterwards, the report says he had sex with the staffer. Slayton is known for pushing for bills targeting members of the LGBTQ community. The 45-year-old is also married. For NPR News, I'm Sergio Martinez Beltran in Austin. A jury in New York has found former President Donald Trump liable for battery and defamation in the sexual abuse civil lawsuit brought by writer E. Jean Carroll. Trump is vowing to appeal. The jury did not find enough evidence to say Trump had raped Carroll. Trump has been ordered to pay her $5 million. NPR has confirmed that Congressman George Santos faces at least one federal criminal charge. NPR's Kerry Johnson reports the New York Republican has drawn intense scrutiny for months. George Santos has been dogged by revelations that he lied about his background and engaged in questionable financial dealings before his election last year. Santos recently announced he would run for re-election, even though federal prosecutors in Brooklyn have been investigating him for months. The criminal charges first reported by CNN could be unveiled as early as Wednesday. The House Ethics Committee announced its own investigation of Santos this year. Santos has said he embellished his resume, but he's denied any criminal wrongdoing. Carrie Johnson, NPR News, Washington. This is NPR News.